welcome. My name is uh, Jim Hochstein from Siebert Electronics. Thanks for joining our long-term deployments with Siebert Electronics Instruments webinar. I'll be your host today. I'm the Director of Marketing at Siebert. Here we've got a couple of images of our instrumentation out in a variety of different deployments or recently pulled from deployment. We have Seabird 39 temperature loggers near a coral reef, a pier-mounted Seabird 16 CTD, and Seabird 37 moored CTDs recently recovered and in more of a hairy configuration. Our agenda today will be an introduction to Seabird Electronics, our approach to instrument design, calibrations, etc. Our Seabird 37 and 16 moored CTD instruments, our Seabird 19 CTD profiler, our Seabird 56 and 39 more temperature loggers, and we'll talk about some current application examples, and then we'll wrap up with Q&A. So just to make sure we're all on board with the same jargon, what is a CTD? A CTD is a generic term for a water quality instrument used for measurement of conductivity, temperature, and depth. These properties, measured properties, CTD, are then used to calculate salinity, which then is used to determine density and sound velocity. A CTD can be used for both moored applications as well as profiling through the water column. Our purpose at Seabird Electronics, we're the largest manufacturer of marine and freshwater instruments for measurement of salinity, temperature, pressure, dissolved oxygen, pH, etc. We make CTDs, we make water bottle samplers, CTD recorders, a variety of other sensors and packages. But our real focus is science. And that's the science of understanding water quality measurement. And so we're deeply invested in engineering, metrology, calibration, software development, scientific analysis, and other pursuits that make our products more accurate, reliable, and broadly useful to you, the scientist, the researcher, and the water quality monitor. About Seabird, we were founded in 1974 by a researcher from the University of Washington Applied Physics Lab. We're located just outside of Seattle. We were acquired by Danaher and now are part of the Hawk organization. We work very closely with Hawk Hydromet, particularly in the US and Canada. We have 110 employees, five oceanographers, and we have more than 40 products in production. We formed Seabird Scientific in 2010. I'll talk more about that later. Our customers are worldwide customers, work at research institutes, ocean and coastal observing programs, national and local government agencies, engineering and consulting firms, and navies throughout the world. These customers invested in the science of water quality, monitoring water quality, that focus on long-term deployments and use, again, throughout the world, include NOAA, EPA, USGS, ocean research institutes, coastal research institutes, state departments of ecology, environment, resources, and municipalities. Our products, and again, these products are based on pull from the customer, what the customer wants to do their mission, to serve their science. So we have CTD profilers for use off of boats and ships, the 911, the 25, and the 19. We have multi-bottle water samplers that tie into these profilers more CTD recorders that we'll talk about significantly today, and inductive modems for wireless communications on these moored sensors, these 16, 37, et cetera. We also, again, throughout our history, have integrated our CTD packages into a variety of different platforms, including gliders, Argo floats, et cetera. We also produce high-quality wave and tide recorders, dissolved oxygen sensors, Clark cell-based or optical-based that we'll talk about more later, pH sensors, and then shipboard thermosalinographs. These are used in fisheries, maritime work, and other applications for understanding what the surface temperature and salinity environment are. Seabird Scientific was formed in 2010 when Wet Labs joined our team. Wet Labs, as you likely know, creates a variety of optical sensors for chlorophyll, fluorometry, PAR, They've recently launched a phosphate sensor called the Cycle. The Atlantic then joined our team in 2011. They also do optical sensor development and other applications. 
They're building the SUNA nitrate sensor and have recently launched the CFET pH sensor. One of the first results of our teaming, the Seabird Scientific work, is the WQM, which is a wet labs and Seabird Electronics product, the water quality monitor, which uses Seabird physical property sensors, CTD and DO, and wet labs optical sensors to create a very powerful package for high fouling environments. Now back to Seabird Electronics. We focus on these water quality parameters, temperature, conductivity, and pressure. We measure these in addition to dissolved oxygen and pH. We calculate depth as a function of pressure and latitude, and then are able to calculate salinity based on temperature, conductivity, and pressure. From salinity, then, we can calculate density and sound velocity. What's very important to understand here is that small errors of the base measurement, temperature, conductivity, and pressure, can create large errors in your calculation of salinity, density, or even sound velocity. So we focus relentlessly on creating very high accuracy temperature, conductivity, and pressure measurements. So why use Seabird sensors? We focus on producing the most accurate CTD sensors on the market, backed with solid calibration from the factory. We create fast response time sensors so that you can do high speed profiling and capture at the same time the resolution of the environmental features that you want to measure. Our sensors are durable. Their time and application tested robustness, far and wide, from Puget Sound to the Chesapeake to all of the oceans, we have time tested applications, time-tested designs that our customers universally like and support and give us feedback on how to improve our designs. Our sensors, driven through our relentless calibration approach, are exceptionally low drift. And our anti-fouling strategies for moorings include pump flow and anti-fouling cartridges. We'll talk more about these items later. Bottom line is Seabird sensors provide the best data per dollar with less service, less data loss, and longer deployments. Now to back this up, why do I say those things on the previous slide? There are these key features in the design, the philosophy, and the approach that go into our CTD sensors. We use pumped flow. We draw a sample of water inside the CTD through the conductivity cell, taken on the same parcel of water. So the temperature, conductivity, oxygen, etc., are all taken on the same parcel of water. With pumped flow, we have constant flow rate through the flow path, which allows each sensor a fixed time response instead of variability that will be driven by currents or waves. And with our anti-fouling approach, this pumping traps water in the flow path between samples. We use an internal electrode-type conductivity cell. There's no external field, no proximity effects due to nearby metal. The conductivity measurement is completely unaffected by external fouling, again, because the water sample is taken inside the instrument. And because we just have to apply anti-fouling biocide to the internal flow path, this allows the conductivity cell to perform better. And then finally, one of our key features is individual calibration of each instrument over the entire range of the measurement in a state-of-the-art calibration system. And we'll talk about this more later. So what about pumping? Let's talk about this diagram here on the right-hand side. This is an SMP IDO. This is one of our microcats. And what happens is we see a water parcel, a water sample, is drawn in through the intake port by the pump. The water parcel moves past the thermistor and up through the conductivity cell, this is a U-shaped pipe flow, up through the conductivity cell for measurement, into the oxygen sensor in this case, and back down and out through the exhaust. So this approach, this pumping approach, provides a constant flow of fresh water past the sample. This constant flow rate, as I mentioned previously, allows consistent sensor response time for the thermistor, the conductivity cell, the oxygen sensor. 
the U-shaped flow path means that the intake and the exhaust are at the same depth and therefore the same pressure meaning that there's less impact of mooring motion, currents, or internal waves on the measurement. And at the intake and the exhaust, we also have antifouling cartridges, which allow diffusion of the antifouling biocide into the flow path to keep the flow path clear. The bottom line, pumping allows for ducted temperature, conductivity, and other sensors, oxygen, to measure on the same parcel of water. Our anti-fouling str strategy is multifaceted. We have three main fouling, anti-fouling features. One is this anti-fouling cartridge that are installed, as I said, at the intake and the exhaust of the flow path. You see the photo on the right. Now this approach is anti-fouling cartridge and the chemical involved is EPA certified for use in water quality monitoring. Because we've got a cartridge on both the intake and the exhaust, the biocide then diffuses out of the cartridges between samples. The measurement flow path as the second step is then pumped before and during each sample to prevent growth. And then finally, in Clark cell oxygen, oxygen sensor equipped systems, the Clark cell itself consumes oxygen in that fixed flow path between samples, which reduces the amount of oxygen available for growth. A couple of examples of why, again, pulling the water sample inside the CTD is so important and the benefits you can, you can have. On the left-hand photo, we see a WQM uh, and the external packaging you can see is completely covered with fouling. But if you remove the Seabird 43 oxygen sensor, you see there's no fouling on the inside. So the plumbing, the pumping, the anti-fouling equipment are protecting the sensor from the external fouling. There's another example. In a Seabird 16, you see on the left, soon after deployment, the exhaust pipe is totally open and there's no fouling on the instrument, of course. After a number of months in the water, the instrument, the frame, etc., are covered with fouling, but the exhaust, the exhaust pipe, due to the anti-fouling cartridges, are clear. Finally, we'll talk a little bit about calibration and metrology. As I said before, each Seabird instrument is delivered fully calibrated from the intended, over the intended measurement range from the factory. Our in-house metrology lab keeps primary standards for temperature, conductivity, and pressure and are maintained and cross-checked with U.S. NIST labs. Each instrument is calibrated either to six or 11 points, evenly distributed across the full intended measurement range. And our calibration facility uses state-of-the-art computer-controlled baths that are operated at two to four times the accuracy of sensors. And these bath conditions, these state points, are traced back to the primary standards. There's a couple of photos that's, that show our infrastructure for calibration and metrology. On the left-hand side, the green baths are the large instrument baths, so the 16, the 19, the CCATs, the 37 microcats. As you see here, the Argo CTD heads for floats are used in the large bath. Then the individual modular sensors, temperature, conductivity, DO, et cetera, are calibrated in the small bath. And then a shot of our salinometer. Seabird completes over 38,000 calibrations a year, of which only 29, 30,000 of these are used for excuse me, 10,000 of these are used for production. The balance of these are used for R&D and for process ver verification to ensure that our calibrations are still on track. These quality calibrations allow us to create instruments that are very stable. Some of our best instruments will last for over five years deployed autonomously in the ocean. So our designs incorporate decades of work, decades of work focusing on this long-term deployment issue to eliminate sources of drift from the electronics design, thermal drift, and other instabilities that we see, that you see in the environment. Our design improvements are part of a virtuous cycle. So we create a new design, we tweak a design, we roll it through calibration, and we see if it's still stable. 
and we drive that feedback loop from calibration back to design engineering and out to field work with you, the researchers. As an example, our SMP IDO microcat CTD and DO has the following drift specifications. And again, these are drift specifications based on our quality calibration work here in house. Our temperature specification for this instrument is 0 0.002 degrees Celsius stability change per month. So that's the drift spec. So in three months, it means you'll have 0 0.0006 degrees Celsius change in temperature, measurable and traced back to Seabird's calibration activities, which are traced back to the primary NIST-based standards. So what does this all mean? Before we talk about the instruments, it means your cost of ownership is lower. You have longer deployments. You can save money and time, less calibration, less servicing, less biofouling. And the data is more reliable. It's more accurate. There's less data loss. And on the profiling side, you can profile continuously to save time and money. Depending on the application, Seabird instruments can collect stable, high-quality data for several months or up to a year between calibration, saving thousands of dollars per year. Now, on to the instrument discussion. We have a couple of different categories we want to talk about today, but our Seabird moored CTDs come in two main categories, the Seabird 37, the MicroCAT, and the Seabird 16, the CCAT. The MicroCAT is, is an integrated platform. A couple of different sensor options the Seabird 16 has extreme flexibility. We can install a number of different instruments to your choosing on the platform. The MicroCAT itself has two main different flavors, the SMs and the SIs. And the main difference is the SM includes batteries and the SI requires shore or buoy power. So you see on the left-hand side photo on SMP, you can see the housing is much longer. That's to accommodate the batteries. The SI is shorter and then ties into shore or buoy power. Each, the SM and the SI, you can have with pump, you can have with DO, et cetera. For these long-term applications and coastal and estuarine applications, we think the SMP IDO microcat, that is with memory, with batteries, with pump, and with DO, is an ideal candidate for your applications. This instrument has adaptive pump control, which enables, basically identifies the best pumping time to ensure the best DO accuracy based on the ambient temperature. It has the anti-fouling cartridges, the U-shaped flow path, and the pumping regimen that maximizes biofouling protection. And of course, it's user programmable, integrated data and delivery in a real-time package high accuracy and high stability sensors. And we are currently developing SDI-12 communications and vented pressure capability. That will be out this summer. Here's the spec list, which I'll leave to review, leave you to review on your own time. But we have temperature, high accuracy temperature, great stability, et cetera, as we see on all Seabird products. Now, if you need more flexibility in the type of instruments you want to use in your moored application for long-term deployment, we have the Seabird 16 CCAT. This has six A to D input channels, optional pump, optional strain gauge, or digi-quartz pressure sensor. But what's really key here for you is that you can use a variety of different flexible sensors on board this platform. Besides CTD, you can add DO, pH, chlorophyll, turbidity, CDOM, PAR, et cetera a variety of different interval sampling opportunities, and of course it has real-time capability as well, including inductive modems if you're so interested. The CCAT specs, the accuracy, the stability, et cetera, to provide that long-term de deployment capability are similar to the MicroCAT. We are also developing an optical oxygen sensor, which we are now beginning to ship. Most of our work has been with the Clark cell, and we still believe it's the right technology, the right product for high accuracy, high speed profiling application. But we also have an optical DO sensor, which will provide very good long-term deployment and anti-fouling capability. In this case, the 63, which is our optical DO sensor, has high accuracy, low drift rate, 
and comes individually calibrated from the Seabird factory like the rest of our instruments. It's currently available on the CCAS, the 16 and the 19, and will be available this summer integrated into the microcats, as we see here. Moving on to the other CCAT, the Seabird 19. This is the sister to the Seabird 16, but for profiling, optimization, and application. This photo is a great shot from the National Park Service doing profiling off the back of one of their, one of their ships. The Seabird 19 is a lightweight profiling instrument for handheld or winch deployment. It uses continuous internal recording or also can output in real time. It has a fast sample rate of 4 hertz and fast response sensors. And like the 16, can use the same optional sensor suite, DO, pH, fluorometers, PAR, etc. Interestingly, it can also be used in a moored mode. The bottom line with the Seaver 19 is you get high quality, high resolution, continuous water column profiling. The Seaver 19 can allow for a nominal 1 meter per second deployment rate. You do not have to wait at each depth, 5 meters, 10 meters, 20 meters, for the instrument to equilibrate. The specifications are identical to that of the Seabird 16, so again, high accuracy, long-term stability, et cetera. Again, born out from our decades of work in profiling and moored applications. Now on to our moored temperature loggers, the 56 and the 39. Here we see a number of 39s deployed off a coral reef. The 56 is a very small diameter, less than one inch, Temperature logger has onboard memory and batteries. It's got one AA battery and uses USB 2.0 to offload the data. But it does not have real-time capability, so it's more of a very lightweight, low-cost application. The Seabird 39 is built with the same thermistor, but you can add a pressure sensor and has real-time capability. The Seabird 56 has high accuracy, long-term stability, and can sample as fast as 2 hertz. At slower sample rates, it can last for almost two years in a deployment, and again uses USB interface. The Seabird 39 with optional pressure, again low cost, battery powered, a real-time instrument, has high accuracy, great stability, optional pressure. It has an embedded thermistor for enhanced survivability, or it can be an external thermistor. One of our customers calls this shopping cart proof for when the rivers run high. SDI-12 invented pressure capability will be coming this summer as well. Now on to a couple of quick applications. First, the microcat in an ocean mooring application. A number of our Seabird 37 microcats were deployed on a fixed mooring in the Antarctic Ocean by Woods Hole in 2001. After recording data for a number of months, the mooring disappeared and it was recently rediscovered re by the Woods Hole folks in 2011. The microcats on board that mooring had collected the data and then when their main batteries died, still had enough energy to run the internal clocks, which were only running 80 minutes slow after being deployed for 10 years. And of course, the data that was collected initially was still available. Two of these microcats were brought back in-house for post-calibration and we're still within the drift spec. If you'd like to read more about it, look up the ghost mooring online at Woods Hole. For a microcat coastal mooring application, Old Dominion deployed a number of our microcats in the Chesapeake Bay down to 60 meters with pressure and dissolved oxygen. The instruments provided great data during the entire two-month research program. The customer said the sensors performed very well. As you can see, in the attached photo, the fouling was quite significant, but there was no degradation of the signal, and the oxygen sensor worked extremely well in the anoxic zone at the bottom. It's very interesting to see the microcats themselves. There are three of them here, one, two, three. They're completely fouled with this, this hairy material, but the intake and exhaust ports are clear. And then finally, a, seabird, a couple of Seabird 19 coastal profiling Stories one, an Australian fisheries researcher recently moved his research program to a well-outfitted 
Seabird 19 with DO, pH, chlorophyll, turbidity, and PAR. An Ohio-based EPA manager added an SBA 19 to his program to avoid stopping and waiting for equilibration at each profiling depth. And a USGS researcher that provides profiling services for the Army Corps in and around dam waterways uses the 19 for profiling applications because of its high sampling rate vis-a-vis -vis other offerings. In these last two cases, these gentlemen are able to profile a wider area because of the fast response time of the Seabird sensors or to get back to their lab more quickly and avoid more ship time costs. I greatly appreciate your time today, folks. And if you have more information, if you're looking for more information, please contact Hawk Hydromet or Seabird Electronics. Thank you.